What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's not a beautiful day today. It's very cold. <laughs> We've had a few hot days. The past seven days have been really, really good. I don't know what happened. But I got my glasses on. Perhaps just trying to look cool. Man, that looks stupid. Man. I hope you're doing great. Thank you very much for stopping by. It's extremely cold. Don't you hate it when it's cold? It's like winter, man. I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching us all over the world. South Africa, Zimbabwe, thank you. Namibia, Malawi, I see you. Thank you very much. Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Jamaica, UK, United States of America, Tobago, Trinidad. Thank you so much. All of South America, Brazil, I see you. Thank you for stopping by. So today, we got something very interesting. Now, Lady Pondo has said something crazy. Why is Ukraine invited a G20? Why should you invite Ukraine? You, why are they special? What's special about Ukraine? Let's listen to what he has to say. Kiev has also said that had they been invited to the G20, they would have been able to impress upon uh, the, the delegates and the members uh, the, the, the reality of the situation, and it would have helped their understanding of what was happening in the war. Uh, do you think Ukraine should have been invited to the G20? Should Ukraine be invited to the G20 summit so they can come and explain the issues? We can explain to you what's really happening in our country and you'll understand us. Listen to this lady. Ukraine is uh, not a member of the G20 and it's not been the practice to invite, uh, you know, external uh, countries to come to the G20 and almost make a submission. Um, we are very pleased that the African Union has become a permanent uh, part and again we credit and thank India for that decision uh, having been made. Yes, the African Union is now part of the G20. We're talking about Ukraine though. But, uh, I don't think um, that it would be appropriate to have a situation where one country that has a conflict then believes it should be invited uh, should we be inviting Mozambique, which has got terrorist attacks? Should we be inviting Mali, which has had a coup, or uh, Burkina Faso? If we don't invite them, why? Is it because they're African, and so the conflicts they experience don't matter? Should we be inviting Mozambique, who has terrorist attacks? Should we be inviting Mali? Should we be inviting Burkina Faso? Because they also have trouble. So in fact, Ukraine asked to be present in G20 so they can go and explain to you what's happening in Ukraine. What are the difficulties they're going through? Why is it so hard for them right now? So that the president at the G20 can understand and, you know, and come up with something positive. Now, Lady Pondo said, should we be inviting just any other country that is at war at G20? Why don't we invite Mozambique if we can invite Ukraine? Why not invite Mali? Because... There's been a coup in Mali. Why not Burkina Faso? They're going through difficulties as well. Why just Ukraine? Is Ukraine special, better than any other countries in the world? Deserve all the attention in the world? So I think we have to be very measured uh, in how we approach uh, international organizations and participation within them. It's crazy. Like, Ukraine, I understand as much as we need to respect what's happening and nobody wants to see people die and stuff like that. Now, Lady Pondo said very clearly, should you be inviting every other person, every other country that's, you know, going through turmoil, every other country that's going through hardship right now? Is that acceptable? So for the G20, I know a lot of people don't understand what G20 is. Uh, G20 is, uh, you know, a summit where most of countries that are developed and developing countries come together, negotiate, discuss about the future, economics, global warming and stuff like that. So G20 or Group of 20 is an international intergovernmental forum comprising of 19 sovereign countries, the European Union and the African Union. It works to address major issues related to global economy, such as international financial stability, climate change, mitigation, and sustainable development. So they come together, head of state, governmental official, banks, and financial institutions to talk and discuss about the future. So G20 was founded in 1999, and it's only now, it's only in 2023 that the African Union has been accepted. So we were not 
relevant at the time. And I'm guessing maybe it's because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Now that they need African input, they need African vote, that they realize, you know what, we can't keep these people out of this forever. We need to bring them in. Now the African Union, only now the African Union is part of the G20. But for all these years, the European Union was part of the G20. Now Lady Pondo of South Africa was asked another question, like, are you happy that now Africa is part of the G20. Listen to me. The African Union has been uh, inducted in the G20 uh, as a full-fledged member. Do you think Africa is finally getting its voice uh, and, and its uh, rightful place on global platforms? Only now in 2023, the group of founders in 1999, we were nobodies at the time. Now they need, you know, copper. Now they need lithium. Now they see they can't play you anymore. They want to get you involved. Interesting. Well, certainly it's beginning to happen. But of course, we've got the the bigger one, I suppose we're eating an elephant one piece at a time, uh, because the really big one is the reform of the UN, and particularly addressing uh, the UN Security Council. So what she's trying to say here is, we, look, it's good that we're part of the you know, G20, that's good. But what we need now is the UN. We need to be involved, especially in the Security Council. The Security Council, is, uh, these are the privileged people in the United Nations. There are five countries in the United Nations who have veto rights. Those are the countries that... If they say no, all of you are going to go no. If they say yes, all of you are going to go yes. This is the United States of America, Great Britain, France, China, and Russia. These are the five permanent seaters at the United Council of Security. And no African country is represented. So these people decide for the world. These people will do anything in the world. There's nothing you can do. You can come 35 countries as one of them. Nobody, you can change whatever they choose. If they choose, they're going to go bomb Afghanistan. Even if 23 countries say, no, we're not going. One of them say, we're going, you're going. If one of them say, we're not going, we're not going. Those are the privilege they get. Now she says, it's good that we're part of the G20, but that's not the final goal. The big one is the Security Council. Why isn't Africa represented? That's a big question. Now, Lady Pondo has been a very strong woman. Very, very strong in her stance. She fears nothing. She's a ferocious in her word. And I think this is the type of African leaders that we do want. Listen to what she had to say here again. But in terms of our interaction with some of our partners in Europe and elsewhere, there has been a sense of a patronizing bullying. This was just, just when the Ukraine and Russia war started. They were asking Africans to choose a stance, choose a side. You're either with us or you against us. You're either with the Europeans, the Western countries, or you're against us. If you don't choose us and you choose Russia, then we're going to punish you. You're going to be suspended. You're going to be sanctioned. And Anthony Blinken took a flight to South Africa to discuss with Naledi Pondo when she was asked a question, how do you feel about this? Do you have to choose side? This was her response. Uh, Toward you choose this or else uh, and uh, the recent uh, legislation passed in the United States of America uh, by the House of Representatives we found a most unfortunate bill uh, that we'd hope the media would say more about because uh, when we believe in freedom as I'm saying it's freedom for everybody you can't say because Africa is doing this you will then be punished by the United States so uh, that's been a disappointing uh, uh, passage of legislation by one house and we hope the other house will not agree to uh, such offensive legislation. Um, so indeed, uh, it is important that all of us accept our ability to hold different opinions. We are, after all, sovereign nations that are regarded as equal in terms of the United Nations Charter. We may differ in terms of economic uh, power and uh, economic ability to influence uh, development in different parts of the world, but what will make the world work is if we respect each other. Wow. What would make the world work is if we respect each other. And she was very clear. She was trying to say we're not going to get bullied. You can suggest, we'll listen to you, and we'll make a judgment. It's not for you to tell us what we choose, what we do, okay? We are sovereign countries. We make our own choices. If we decide to work with Russia, it's our choice. We are free to do so. If we decide to work with you, that's our choice too. It's not for you to say, you're going to do this or else we're going to do that against you. You're going to listen to us or else you're going to do this to her. She says, I'm very glad that Anthony Blinken did not try and intimidate me because I don't think there's any other country will be okay with that for that matter. Now, Lady Pondo has been very strong with many, many instances, many situations in Africa. There was a moment where Israel sent diplomats to the African Union to be observers from Israel in the African Union. This is the African Union, an organization that's solely for African people. Israel sent a delegation of observers to observe the African Union. What was the purpose? 
Many people didn't like it. And one of the diplomats was thrown out. Watch this. <laughs> Why are you here, ma'am? Clearly, she's been very strong. I mean, saying things that many people are scared to talk about. Listen to me. How many more reports do we need that call Israel out on their unfair treatment of Palestinians and point out that Israel is implementing apartheid. Of course, for many South Africans, the narrative of the Palestinian people's struggle does evoke experiences of our own history of racial segregation and oppression. We identify very clearly and fully with the struggle for freedom and self-determination in Palestine. And this is very well understood by most South Africans because they have lived the apartheid. They understand very clearly what it is being oppressed, being segregated. And Naledi Pando is not afraid to speak out because many people don't talk about this subject. With regard to the diplomat from Israel that came to the African Union to be an observer, she continued saying, The AU chairperson Musa Mohammed decided to grant Israel observer status, and this has been roundly condemned by Sadek countries. This Musa Mohammed, I don't know about this guy, is the AU, the African Union chairperson. He decided with his own right to grant Israel observer status in the African Union uh, meetings. I don't know. Did he get money for that? This is crazy. Now Lady Pando says they'll take their protest to the AU meeting next week and they hope to reverse the decision. Well, we certainly have written formally to the African Union Commission Chair to indicate that we want the matter to be on the agenda of the Executive Council where it should have been properly discussed before any such decision uh, was taken. Uh, we believe despite um, the Commission Chair having these powers delegated to him, uh, the matter is of such importance. It's not the first time it's come before the AU. It's not the first time that Israel wants to be part of the observers in Africa. And it was not agreed to previously on two occasions. The situation has not changed. Palestine is not free. Wow. Fellas, we have a mama here. We're going to have to clap for her. Very strong. Very strong woman. I think she should be the figure that should be encouraging our sisters, not Kim Kardashian. <laughs> okay, all those other ladies. Absolutely not. This is no Cardi B. Nothing against her, but Cardi B should not be the model for our people. This is a very strong woman. She doesn't give a continental about how you feel. She's going to tell you the truth the way it is. Why should Ukraine be invited in G20 if Mozambique is not there? Mali is not invited. Burkina Faso is not invited. They're all going through turmoil and difficult times. Why? Why should Israel be accepted into the African Union? They are not Africans. Are Africans in the Israel unions or European Union? No. Why? And this is the mentality we need to carry over. Let me know how you feel about this. It's always a great pleasure. Thank you very much for being part of this. Please don't leave without dropping your comment. We want to know how you feel. God bless. Um...